வணக்கம் சார் வாழ்க தமிழ் சார் நான் தமிழனாக பிறக்கவில்லை அடுத்த ஜென்மத்தில் ஆதி நான் தமிழனாக பிறக்க வேண்டும் தமிழ் உலகத்திலே சிறந்த மொழி அந்த பாக்கியம் எனக்கு கிடைக்கவில்லையே என்று before the tamil nadu first phase election <laughs> after the election got over in the last phase when he goes to orissa what does he say how can you give the control of orissa to tamilians <laughs> he showed his anger people of tamil nadu will never forget and that is depicted here in this budget as you try to cheat who are tamil people and saying that you will support tamil and wherever you went you tried to speak our tirukural and tried to get our hearts but your true heart the prime minister is venom against the people of tamil nadu which you have said that sir i won't take much time in this but speaking about the budget sir because even the bjp speaker who spoke never spoke about the budget sir <laughs> sir i think this time has come for the prime minister to take some good advice and follow our chief minister ravidin mall chief minister tri mk stalin when my chief minister tri mk stalin became the chief minister of tamil nadu he said i will work not only for the people who voted for me but also for the people who did not vote for me it is my duty but today sir our prime minister is not working for the people who voted for his party but only for the parties which are supporting him sir in fact if you see sir lakhs and crores of rupees were spent by this union government to promote modi ka guarantee before the elections wherever you went televisions radios newspaper channels it was all public money was used to promote the prime minister sir after the election modi ka guarantee is gone sir now modi me ka insurance what insurance so insurance policy premium is being paid by the people of india to ensure that he is still continues as a prime minister sir for 3 years the union government share of funds for chennai's metro rail has been pending our chief minister has repeatedly written and urged for the funds the chennai metro rail phase 2 sir which they had to give 50% of the fund till date they not given a single rupee but our chief minister has said tamil nadu government will fund and already put 12000 crores sir in this budget sir sir we would like to know you went to coimbatore you had a road show you right try the prime minister try to appease the people of coimbatore sir we have sent you a project a tamil nadu government has sent you a project for the coimbatore metro rail Madurai. for madurai metro rail no response nothing has come complaint for you sir our lord government has made a request for the tambaram chengal bit elevated express till now no mention of the funds or the sir sir for 10 years the middle class has burned the brunt of inflation rise in food prices rise in fuel and lpg prices sir let me bring it sir do it because right now the russia ukraine war is going on because of that the europe western countries are not buying the fuel directly from russia but those russian fuel is being brought bought by india at after it if the basket of petrol petroleum baskets 120 dollars india was getting for 60 dollars did any of the indians benefit because of price reduction no this oil went to our prime minister's friends refineries got refined into diesel and petrol and was exported to europe and they sold it at the market price you brought windfall taxes the first time in india windfall taxes was brought sir i would like to ask the finance minister why don't you give us a white paper on the windfall taxes and how much of money the ambani's and adani's made of the ukraine war sir yeah yeah right one has to find sir that to provide substantial relief for income tax sir household servings has hit a record low of 5.2% percent. 
of gross national disposable income in the year uh, 2023. So what do the common man get, sir? A saving of 1,458 rupees per month. That is the savings they are talking about, sir. Sir, you have announced targeted programs, irrigation and flood mitigation. Bigar gets the Koshi, Mihichi, Indra State Link. Assab, Sikkim and Uttaraganda are getting assistance for flood management. Imachal is getting assistance for reconstruction, reconstruction and rehabilitation. Sir, what about Tamil Nadu, sir? Sir, we had the worst floods in Chennai. Sir, in Tutukudi, we had floods which have never seen for 150 years. The finance minister, Mrs. Nirmala Sitharaman, she came, she went and saw with her friends and she said she was amongst her friends. And there, she, saw, she appealed with the people, yes, we will do something. Till now, not a single rupee had come. And in fact, sir, she visited temples there and asked the residents, do not put money into the undial. Give the money directly to the priest. Is that the way a finance minister behaves, sir? Will it be okay, sir, if I go tell my people of Tamil Nadu, don't pay taxes to the union government? Yeah. Because all the money yeah. goes to other states, doesn't come to Tamil Nadu. That's not the way I elected, sorry, she is not, she's a selected person. So, she's a selected person will begin. <laughs> Tamil Nadu has raised requests and asked the floods. Our chief minister made multiple visits to meet the Prime Minister and made a demand for 37,000 crores as a disaster relief. You know how much the Union Minister and the Union Government gave Tamil Nadu, sir? You'll be surprised. You might even faint. The Union Government gave us only 276 crores so far. Shame. Yet it seems to be in balance. Shame. In announcing 11,500 crores to BR due to the political compulsions of this minority BJP government. Sir, when there was flood in Gujarat, the Prime Minister went there the very next day and announced a slow support measures up to 1,000 crores immediately. But Tamil Nadu, after even seven months, there's no care. Sir, why is the union government singling out our state and denying our people of our schemes they need? Sir, it is not enough. Tamil Nadu, you visit Tamil Nadu during elections and call us, Sir, people of Tamil Nadu will never, ever forgive you for this betrayal. Sir, while I'm happy, sir, the BJP has finally taken a cue and following the footsteps of our Honorable Chief Minister, the Deputy Model, model Chief Minister, MK Stalin, sir, by copying his pioneering scheme. Pioneering scheme. Sir, the scale that you have announced is unbecoming at the union. Sir, take for example, the skill development scheme, which the budget says. The budget, in the budget, the finance minister says, it will train 20 lakh people in a year's time. But my Dravidian model chief minister, through MK Stalin, has already introduced a scheme of training 15 lakh youth in a year. A state government is training 15 lakhs, a union government with all the resources, is only training 20 lakhs a year, sir. Sir, <laughs> they've also taken a, a trademark derivative ball scheme, like the state run hostels for women, the Tori hostels. That was implemented by our chief minister. Sir, we welcome it. This should, this should in fact, be named as a Dravidian model the hostels for the women throughout the country, sir. Uh, because, and the credit goes to our chief minister, who first implemented it in Tamil Nadu. Again, sir, Another scheme, non mudalvan scheme, which is now repacked as upskilling program. Even the India Alliance right, of Ensuring Apprenticeship and Employment Linked Incentive has been taken up, sir. Good for them. They're copying us. Sir, but I need to remind, when the uh, in a Congress manifesto announced this, what did Mrs. Nir Mrs. Nirmala Sitabra said? It is not, it is unimplementable. What happened now? Probably, I think, sir, she thought it was, uh, no, it was not brought by Sir Neruji. <laughs> now, because, sir, the, sir, the BJP has surprisingly managed to get very few votes in Tamil Nadu, sir. I feel bad for them, sir. In the previous nine, 2019, they were competing with Nota. <laughs> but this time, sir, Tamil Nadu people have given a little more. But, sir, 
the way this but sir this time we got 40 out of 40 you got zero not a single seat could you win sir you think people of tamil nadu will forget uh, forgive you for this traitory you 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 are being so vicious against the people of tamil nadu sir but for andhra pradesh the south has been ignored you announced a slew of schemes for your allies in bihar and andhra but tamil nadu kerala telangana and karnataka i been completely ignored Bravo. sir sir we have no issues sir please we want you to support andhra pradesh we are for we are not we are want you to support bihar we are not against it but do not penalize others yes. do not not penalize other states this reflects very poorly on you sir sir i thought mrs nirmala sita was a very learned person she has come out with a new policy new east angle sir yesterday i was scratching my head and wondering what is the new east the new east of india bihar comes <laughs> andhra pradesh comes west bengal doesn't come <laughs> sir and tamil nadu is sharing border with andhra pradesh and we don't come so whenever convenient you map <laughs> she is using it <laughs> sir there's a saying in tamil sir enakku vanda ratho unakku vanda thakali chutney that means if i get injured bread comes for me but if you do something is only a tomato chutney <laughs> sir i remember sir probably mrs nirmala sitaraman is suffering from selective amnesia or dementia i do not know in 2014 you had chandra babu naidu garu as your alliance partner we all know how badly he was treated he had to give two choices for the ministry he even now had a choice to pick who the minister who the what portfolio could be he had come for the swearing in ceremony then alone he knew that one of his choice is going to become a minister and that to the same civil aviation is was given to them that time sir the chief minister of andhra pradesh to chandra babu naidu garu wanted an appointment with the prime minister modi he had to wait 4 months 4 months he had to wait to get an appointment with modi for what special status for andhra pradesh what are all you are giving now he wanted 10 years back but what did our prime minister do 2019 sir he said into a rally in raja mahendravaram the pm said the polavaram project is an atm for chandrababu naidu and his son sir when he chooses you you put a person down but when you want to become a prime minister because of his help the same atm changes and becomes a very important machine for the country atm sir <laughs> sir and next thing sir the matter of one week 15 bridges in bihar collapsed normally our sang parivar would have come and said corruption and the bridges all it we need cbi inquiry we need ed inquiry but what are you doing sir you are giving 26000 crores to rebuild those bridges sir you are rewarding the corrupt persons in bihar because you want to stay in power and you say you are pure how can we accept that sir sir there was a lot, there was a lot of hope the budget if everyone thought it would be a pro poor budget pro farm budget pro youth budget as we have, um, as we thought assume your humbling defeat would make you to come back clean and good for the people sir expenditure on social service is crucial for a developing nation like india it is the only tool we have to eradicate poverty develop better health infrastructure and provide a safety net for the most vulnerable as per the government estimates sir they always compare the amount spent this year versus the last last year to show how overall the welfare expenditure has grown at a cagr of 12.8% in education sir education by 9.4 health by 15.8 and claim is a record expenditure sir the devil is in the details looking at the figure in terms of percentage of total expenditure reveals a different story sir expenditure on education was just around 1.9% for the year 2017-18 which has fallen to 1.7 in 2023-24 medical and public expenditure has decreased 
from point A to point 0.16. Welfare schemes for the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and minorities have declined from point 0.16 to point 0.13. There is no mention of census. This is the fifth budget being presented without the census. This is the first government since independence that has failed to conduct the census even three years after the pandemic. Sir, you compare yourself with other countries. I'm going to become the fifth largest economy in the world. Sir, 143 countries in the world after the pandemic have conducted the census successfully and managed to get the data. So what does it mean? The government doesn't know how many people to plan for, what the state of human resources are, what the demography and economic structure are at the local, regional and national levels. So how can we expect effective policy making for this government? One wonders if you are avoiding to conduct census because of the pressure from within your dependable allies for a caste-based census. Sir, budget lets down the poor, fails to address the growing economic equality. Sir, usually the GDP, sir, when Manmohan Singh, as a Prime Minister, former Prime Minister, took over, sir, the GDP in 2004 was 54.8 lakh crores rupees. Sir, GDP usually doubles every 10 years. When Manmohan Singh left in 2014, and the great Prime Minister Sri Modi took in 2014, it was 105.27 lakh crores, literally doubled. Sir, that means after 10 years, let me, let's do the maths. You should have doubled. You should have been more than 200 crores, sir. A GDP, 200 lakh crores. But your governance has brought in for 2023-24, it is only 173.82 lakh crores. Sir. This shows that you are not performing as you claim to. Budgets are aimed to stimulate growth. The economic survey says India's real GDP grew by 8.2% for the year, financial year 24 marking a growth of over 7% for the third consecutive year. It forecasts that in a modest 65 to 7%. Sir, but what is growth? It is just the increase of the size of the economy, or is it an equitable distribution of wealth from the growth? Who is benefiting from the growth? Sir, is the 3.44 crore people living in extremely poverty in country. After all, they are the ones most affected by macroeconomic indicators like inflation in food prices. While headlines and core inflation have eased to 5.1% and 3.1% respectively, the consumer food price index remains high at 9.4% in June 2024. Economic inequality has widened significantly over the past under the BJP's crony capitalism government. The wealth of Indian billionaires has increased that means Modi's friends has increased by 35% in 2020 alone, while millions were pushed into poverty due to the pandemic. Reports indicate that 10% of the population holds 77% of the national wealth, highlighting a severe disparity in income distribution. There is another outstanding statistics with, with this as well. By 22-23, the top 10% of the country's population as 22.6% of all income and own 40% of all the wealth in the country. Sir, this is worse than the colonial era. This is worse than the British Raj. This is how the BJP is taking our country to that. Sir, youth and employment data. Sir, this is the elephant in the room. Despite, despite promises to create two crore jobs annually, the reality has been starkly different. The unemployment rate, rate rose by 40 by uh, here I for 6.1 in 2018 to 17.8, sir. It peaked, sir. This was, much more before, this was much before the pandemic. So we can't blame the global situation. Today, the situation is worse. One side, the Ministry of Labor and Employment is saying that at per the latest available a periodic labor force survey, reports that estimate unemployment rate on usual status of person of age 15 years and above was 4.2 in 2021. 4.1 in 22 and 3.2 in 23, respectively. Sir, but the data for the, from the Centre for Monitoring Indian Economy, an independent think tank says the unemployment rate was 8% in 2020 21 
5.9% in 21-22 and 7.3% in 2022-23. This belief is far more believable on the ground in reality. According to the CMI data, the unemployment rate in India stood at 9.2% in June 24. It's a sharp increase from 7% in May 24. CMI consumer premium also shows that the female unemployment reached 18.5% exceeding the national average in June 24. This up from 51.1% the same period last year. At the same time, male un um, unemployment stood at 7.8, slightly higher than 7.7 .7 in the June 2023. Sir, why the labor participation rate rose to 41.4% in June 2024 from 40% in May and up from 39% in June, the rural unemployment rate rose to 9.3 in June from 6.3 in May. The urban unemployment rate climbed from 8.6 to 8.9. The contrast sharply with figures of 2040 where the unemployment rate was 5.44 during the UPA regime. So the finance ministers have highlighted the BJP's nine crucial priorities for transforming India into a developed country by 2047. The nine priorities for generating ample, op ample opportunities for India's yes, is included. Productivity and resilience in agriculture, employment and skilling, inclusive human resources development, social justice, urban development, energy security, infrastructure, innovation, research development, and next generation reforms. Sir, let us take one by one. Sir, productivity and resilience, uh, resilience in agriculture. An inter-ministerial committee in April 2016 was set up in 2016 to lay out a roadmap to double farmers' income by 2022, as promised, uh, promised by the Prime Minister. They used 2012-2013 National Sample Survey Office data to estimate. The national average annual income of Indian farmers was 96,000 in 2015-16. Based on this, the committee set the targeted double income at 1,92,694 at 2015-16 country to 2,71 at the current price in this. To achieve those levels, farm income would have to grow annually by 10.4% over the next seven years. The committee calculated. While the data of 22-23 is not available, according to the last Situational survey data released by 2024, the average annual income of the farming household increased from 96,703 in 2015-16 to 1,22,616 in 2018. This suggests the annual growth in farmers' income has been mere 2.8%. Even this growth has been driven from non-farm income since income from crop cultivation declined by 1.5% annually since 2015-16. Sir, at this point, when this government came, they did promise, sir, I was also surprised, that a mega project of interlinking of rivers will be taken. Sir, how many rivers have they interlinked, sir? Can they give us a white paper on that, sir? They keep, as they add, they change the ministry into Jal Shakti ministry, sir, because they want to interlink rivers. Sir, what a scam, sir. They've been cheating us all along. So now let's come to employment and skilling. So I've already presented my case of unemployment issues and lack of scale in skill development issues. I remind you again, the budget says it will take 20 lakh youth across the countries, while my state, my chief minister, the Ravidi Mall Chief Minister, MK Stalin, is providing training for 15 lakh youth per year. So there's a wide gap from a state to a country. Sir, inclusive human resource development. The government's strategy for inclusive resources, human resource development, and social justice focus on comprehensive growth across various sectors. Programs for education, health, and economic improvement, enhanced schemes like PM Diska Karma and PM Savanidi to support artisans, self-help groups, and entrepreneurs. The Purvodaya Initiative, these projects like the Patna Purina Expressway, rupees 15,000 crores for Andhra Pradesh, the capital uh, needs a support for Polavar and Minister Power are all commendable. But why is my state, Tamil Nadu, not included? Why is all the other states not included? I will ask. The people of India would like to know, sir. Whereas the report card of uh, sir for how similar schemes affair the past, 
Many questions on these topics have only given vague data on funding and outcomes. So, India's public health care remains underfunded and overburdened. The country's health care expenditure is still averaging around 1.28% of the GDP, much lower than the global average of 6%. Rural areas face severe shortage of doctors and medical facilities. So how exactly will you have inclusive human resource development? Sir, let's come to social justice. Caste-based discrimination and social inequalities persist. Dalits and other marginalized communities continue to face significant social economic challenges. Inclusive policies and robust implementations are needed to ensure social justice. But all we see is welfare scheme being ignored and spending being cut for these sections that request a social security or a safety net. Sir, we from Tamil Nadu, our chief minister, have been repeatedly explained how neat is an anti-social justice. Yet, you still remain adamant on not abolishing it. Sir, our speaker comes from Kota. This is his constituency. Every year, more than 22 students commit suicide because of their fear of facing Same, same, same. thing is coming for a state. Sir, this is the future of our children. Your arrogance should not come in the way. Sir, this is not what we want. Sir, this is anti-social. This is against the social development. I hope you open your eyes. After all the scams, try do not cover it up and try to push over. Sir, next is they're talking about urban development. You refuse to fund our Chennai Metro Bridge projects or any other metro projects. Lower the state with construction bills for housing projects. The air quality index, likewise, major cities continue to be accelerated and deforestation rates have increased. Smart city mission has been extended until March 2025 after the June deadline was missed. Smart cities allocation slashed for 2,400 crores for the year 25 from 8,000 crores. You say more resources will be allocated for urban rejuvenation mission, which is more about improving the living condition of the urban poor in the city. But during the course of the election, we saw in Chennai when Prime Minister Modi went for a roadshow from his favorite area of Miss Mambalam, and he had to cross my constituency where people are staying, poor people are staying in the slum board houses. Cloths were put, like what they did for Namaste Trump. They didn't want people to see the poor of Gujarat. The poor of Chennai were covered. This is the condition what they said. Sir, I would like to know, what happened to your pipe drinking water to every house? Nothing has been happening, sir. Sir, PM is talking about energy security. Fear, sir, sir, FM has announced a diversified energy plan focused on small modular nuclear reactors, rooftop solar plants, and development of indigenous technology for advanced ultra super critical thermal power plants with much higher efficiency. Can we add the data on how much of this funding will be allocated to each state? And how the criteria of selecting the project for each state will be decided? Sir, as of June, about 54.5% of India's power come from thermal sources like coal, gas, and diesel. While 45.5% 40 comes from non-fusal uh, sources, which includes 1.8% nuclear power cap capacity. According to the power ministry, how does the FM plan to alter this drastically in a short period? What happens if the state decides not to opt for small modular nuclear reactors and want to pursue with alternate sources? Is there a mechanism for how this announcement will be implemented? So there is no announcement related to amb ambitious green hydrogen mission, which got 600 crores the interim budget. No announcement related to electric vehicles in FAME 3, which will be critical to not just cleaner environment, but also industry. What about the funding of harnessing of offshore wind energy potential? So infrastructure, sir. FM has announced 11.11 .11 lakh crores for capital expenditure for 2024-25. Road and railway projects are to get nearly 50% of this outlay. The massive slash in social sector spending over the years, coupled with the unimaginative move to push capital, capex once again in the latest union budget, has become a trademark of BJP budget that does little for the common people of this country. The budget capital expenditure is about 17% more compared to the actual expenditure of 9.48 9 lakh crores last year. FM has once again bet on increased capital expenditure spending, but little to show how it has helped deliver results. 
the two most powerful indicators of revived capital expense cycles are acceleration and completion of investment project and in this increase is net fixed asset of non financial companies we have yet to see any result for the capex investment for the last few years so how can we be sure we must also not forget the large capital expenditures is at the cost of welfare there have been significant cuts in major scheme and no investment in key sectors like health healthcare and education similarly schemes for minorities the disabled the pensioners for the for the elderly have all been sum, summarily reduced in addition the rise in price over the far, past 5 years mean that every rupee buys less than it did in 2019 this deadly combination of insufficient funding and rising inflation directly hurts our nation's poorest and most disadvantages it will be only uh, aggravate existing crises such as uh, inflation historically high uh, unemployment and low savings in the country so this push for infrastructure comes at a large large cost what will we see the results of massive capital expenditure there's capital spending by bjp sir now let's come to innovation development everyone will be in support of sir all of us will be supporting fostering indigenous innovation and research but the union government come follow come follow through with sufficient and consistent funding anush sandan national research fund for basic research and prototype development is to be operationalized how does the government propose to do this is there a road map in place financing pool of 1 lakh crore for spurring private sector driven research and innovations at commercial scale is comfortable but where are the funds for such announcement going to come from so let's go for next generation reform how does the government plan to ensure uniform implementation of land and labor reforms across the states given the varying levels of infrastructure and government capabilities how does the union government plan to structure the fiscal support for state what criteria will be used to determine the allocation of funds how will the government address the digital divide particularly in the rural areas to ensure the benefits of digitized land records and gis mapping are accessible to all citizens how will the government how will the government involve various stakeholders including the farmers labor unions industry representatives in reform process to ensure the concerns such such are adequately addressed we already saw how your farm laws backfired due to lack of consultations in conclusion sir chairman sir the union bu budget has again failed the meet the aspiration of the middle class of the people sir one would like to ask today nearly 4 lakh crores has been promised as a subsidy for andhra pradesh and for bihar to support you being the prime minister i would like to ask from where is the money going to come at whose cost are you going to do this sir i again will demand again we would like to say sir 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 very well sir please sir, conclude 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 as point we are supporting you we are supporting you we are supporting you we are supporting sir please are supporting you, sir while we support we will be supporting dayani please address the chair no need to please thank you sir you are very you are very fair sir <laughs> <laughs> sir please address the chair sir at at this point while i conclude how i say our demands from our chief minister sir mk stall ajuni is for our people tamil nadu as rosen as a primary state as the number one state in tamil nadu in governance and ensuring development takes place but why are you penalizing us because you we didn't elect you we didn't elect you because you are two faced you always want to use us abuse us you want to split us in the name of religion caste and you want to not make sure that you discriminate us by birth and we do never like till now how many times the prime minister has said he likes tamil language he loves tamil language what has he done for our tamil language or for the people of tamil nadu what this is what we say in tamil nadu vaila vada sudra vartan modi that is the reason people of tamil nadu okay i'll explain it he fries vada vada through his mouth <laughs> not through the oil <laughs> and now he doesn't even give the vada to us he takes and he eats himself sir i am please request that people of tamil nadu are watching you do not try to punish them if you punish tamil nadu then india will not grow
India has to grow, Tamil Nadu has to grow. Sir, while I conclude, I want to conclude the last, last, last. Sir, the people of Tamil Nadu have one more great fear with our Prime Minister. In 2014, when the Prime Minister first entered the Parliament, he came to the, the old Parliament. He fell flat at the Parliament and took the blessings of the Parliament in 2014. Sir, now that Parliament is no more. <laughs> now, sir, 2024, sir, the Prime Minister took blessing from the Constitution. He took the Constitution book and took all his blessing. Sir, the people of Tamil Nadu, the people of country are worried. Please do not destroy the Constitution. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, I'm Sri Bharat. Sri